Hello and welcome to episode 93 of the Inventive Marketing Club. We're here every week to help you build a better marketing strategy. On this episode, we're going to be looking at Campaign Monitor and it's going to be a walkthrough. So I'm going to tell you what it is. We're going to talk through pricing and then basically how to create a campaign from start to finish. So very similar to the MailChimp one, but it'll be good to see them as a, a bit of a comparison. You can see the prices and, and how they work and, and then you can decide which one which platform you would prefer to use. So let's dive right in. So first of all, let's have a review of the Campaign Monitor website. Um, I, it's funny, I don't often see this part of it because um, we we use Campaign Monitor ourselves. So we're often in and out of the, the main backend part of it. So it's quite nice to go and actually have a look at their marketing. So let's just talk you through what we've got on here. So, um, and, uh, they're very similar to MailChimp in terms of uh, where, certainly where they started. Both of them are bulk email sending um, software, whereas Campaign Monitor is really just focused on that side of it. And to be honest, they they started off mainly for agencies, as far as I can see. So companies who would send on behalf of other clients. Um, but you, if you're if you're a business, you can just sign up for them directly. Um, or if you're one of our clients, then you can work through our account. It doesn't really matter which way you want to do it. But obviously, if you're working with us, it's going to make our job a lot easier if it's part of our account. Um, I'm going to sh when I do the walkthrough, I'm going to show you how it looks in our account. But it's pretty much the same if you were to sign up. So let's have a look through and see what they can do on here. One of the key things that I like about Campaign Monitor is, is it really just focused on sending emails. Um, there's some complexities to it. So you can have email sequences or journeys, if you will, which I'll, I'll show you a bit more about that later. But also it's got quite a nice email builder. So you can just drag and drop elements together. We're going to go through that. Um, or you can put your own templates in. So if you're into HTML, and why wouldn't you be? If you can go back and have a look at my um, previous um, webinar on HTML hacking, um, then you can create your own custom template as well, which you can use for some cool things. Um, so I like the template side of it and the focus on email. Um, they also do SMS marketing. Now, in fairness, I haven't tried this, so I don't know how it works. But actually, uh, it seems like the sort of tool that if you have a list of people and you know how they respond to your emails, SMS makes a nice complement to that in certain circumstances if used judiciously. You don't want to be bugging people. Um, but I haven't tried that. So um, that might be something I, I need to get into. Maybe we'll do another webinar on that specifically. Um, like uh, other mail programs, you can segment your audience up, um, which allows you to send to take your your big list and segment it down based on location or um, maybe um, if they're a member or the level of membership, which I'll show you an example of that, how that might work. Uh, they've got a link checker, which is pretty cool. I'll just show you that as part of um, when we're going through the, um, the actual build. And... Um, what they call journeys or automation, which allows you to send an email to a list um, based on a set of rules. So if they've opened previous emails, if a certain date occurs, um, um, if they've clicked on a link, um, if they've bought something, there's lots of different ways to fire up uh, trigger emails based on certain interactions. Um, we use it in a number of different ways. We've got one with a client where when they sign up to the list, then they get a sequence of three emails. And the emails are basically a way of warming people up so that when the client gets around speaking to them, they know they've had these emails. They know they've had a certain amount of information being sent to them. So they can be used in a number of different ways. And some people often use them as a, a maybe a pre-sign up to um, uh, a product. So before buying the product, people might want a freebie. And so this freebie can be a sequence of emails that's going to give them some hints and tips that get them part way to solving their problem that um, hopefully the software uh, once they've got gone through those emails and they've they've enjoyed the content they've got from them it sold them on the benefits of um, paying for the software they also like mailchimp they do have a um, what's called transaction transactional emails so you can use campaign monitor as a way of firing out emails based on um, your application software. So um, MailChimp have this, I think they've got a separate product called Mandrill as well that does this. But if you're selling lots of bulk emails, then you can um, trigger them based on um, interactions with um, software that you've got. So the pricing, uh, similar to uh, other programs, you've got these different plans that give you different um, options. Now, I think their pricing is slightly simpler 
than MailChimp. But with the one caveat, MailChimp has a free plan. Campaign Monitor doesn't. And I think that's why I've off, I have a lot of clients who use MailChimp purely because as a free plan, it's a very easy in, great way um, to market. Um, free is always good to get people in through the door. However, I do find that Campaign Monitor kind of works out in terms of cost once you actually start paying for it. And, uh, you know, I just find the user interface simpler, but that be that could be because of familiarity. You know, it's something I use day in, day out. But let's use a similar example. Let's say we've got 500 contacts. We can move this slider to show how many. Then we can fit within the basic plan and we're paying about nine pounds a month. Um, and for that, we get all the sort of standard things I've talked about. Um, if you were to go up to their sort of premiere account, uh, if I can find it here, you can have other uh, items like send time optimization. So rather than just sending everything out, all your emails out at a certain time, then it will try and work out when to send that email based on when they are usually opened. So it's trying to hit people when they're most likely to open it. So it doesn't go, um, it doesn't get a chance to sort of get, fill up their inbox and 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 basically be an email they never get around to seeing. So, but that's only available on the on the basically their premium premiere account, which is quite quite pricey. It's a lot per month, and so only really something you want as a as a big agency, I think, or if you're send, sending a lot of emails. Um, also, certain things on their unlimited account, like a countdown timer. You know, if you've got an offer on or Black Friday, something like that. But the the basic account pretty much does everything else in there. Um, you can also actually let me scroll down the bottom. You can also they tuck it down the bottom here. You can pay per campaign, and I don't think you can do that on Mailchimp. Um, and personally, that's what what we do actually. So uh, many of our clients do pay um, pay per campaign. Some pay monthly. Uh, we pay per campaign because actually we don't use Campaign Monitor for our monthly emails. We use um, Mailpert, which is built into the website because it. Um, I went through this when I was doing the, um, talking about our, our, our email systems, but basically it's because we keep the data on the website then. It's it's better from a GDPR perspective uh, or data transfer perspective. However, with Campaign Monitor, you can send them per campaign. So if I click on that, we get the pricing. It's pretty reasonable to be fair. Um, it's going to cost you a few pounds if you want to send an email out to 500 people. It's not going to be very much at all. So if you're doing this on uh, one email per month, you're better off sending per campaign. And certainly if you're sending once every couple of months, it's still better to do it that way. It can work out quite cost effective. So let's dive in and um, have a look at the system, shall we? So this is Campaign Monitor. It might look slightly different to you because this is customized for um, our agency setup so i've got our logo in the corner and i've cu i've customized the color you're going to have some more options if you were to sign up directly but if you're using um, one of our accounts then it's going to look pretty much similar to this this is a completely empty account so we're going to start from scratch by filling everything out but let's have a walk through uh, of the system so first if we go to overview then if we've sent a few campaigns it's going to give us uh, an overview of uh, what we've sent so we can have a look at them and see how they're performing. We're gonna see what drafts we've got in place, our lists and just give, give us a bit of data. But as we've got nothing um, in here at the moment, there's nothing really useful to see. In campaigns, this is where, if you want to drill back into older campaigns, previous campaigns you've sent, this is where you'd start. Um, and often I like to, rather than creating new campaigns from scratch, is take an older campaign, take the last campaign we did and riff on that. Because I'm often liking to, I like to tweak and change campaigns over time. I don't want to want to stick with one rigid template and keep sending the same thing. I like to tweak them. So it's it's quite good. And I can just pick up the last one and, and duplicate it from there. Um, then we've got automation. So this I talked about this briefly, but you can basically have an uh you, you can have automations where if people are on um they, they come onto your newsletter list. Um, then you can send them a sequence of emails. You can do a more custom one, which might uh, trigger based on uh, a purchase or a date. You can do ones on RSS. So you can have um, a feed from your website pulled into this. And um, it's a bit like the newsletter emails we have going out from our website through MailPoet that every week it'll look at that RSS feed and then send out an email based on the feed, on the feed content. Um, so that's quite useful if, you, if you've got a, a newsletter that you want to automate. And Journey Guides just basically goes through a little wizard to help you find the right journey for you. I'll take you on, depending on time, I might take you through um, one of the, the custom journeys so you can see how that works. 
Transactional, I'm not going to go through that. That's not really, it's a bit out of scope of what we're going to do. But as I said, that's um, if you're sending emails um, via a separate system or an app. List and subscribers. So this is where you manage all the people who are going to receive your newsletters. You can have lots of different lists. Um, we're going to put in one as part of our campaign for our club members, but you could have one for um, uh, from your account system. So we use zero, so we can ex export all of our customers out, put them into Campaign Monitor. Uh, we might want to send them uh, maybe emails every quarter or maybe just before Christmas, just every now and then about important announcements. So, so for example, if we've got uh, something important to tell them about hosting, then I might want to sell, send that to all of our hosting customers. So we can sort of break up the lists in here, depending on uh, who we want to, um, where that data comes from or how we want to send to people. Then we've got insights. To be honest, I don't really use this, but insights will give you um, an insight on the campaigns that you've sent. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't find this particularly useful. I'm just more interested in clicking on the campaigns themselves. And um, all being well, I'll be able to show you a campaign that we've just sent and how that data comes through. And then integrations. So this is linking with your website or other systems. Um, uh, I don't. I'm not going to go into that in this um, webinar. So first things first. Let's go into settings on the right hand side, and we'll start with client details. Now, as I said, because we've got an agency account, it's going to look slightly different. Um, but we so it's calling it client details, but they would be your details. So there's two ways we can do. We can either get the client to pay, or we can pay on their behalf. And we can choose the plan, uh, maybe if we're passing on the cost or we're including it in um, something else that we're doing, we can do that. We can also set up some basic details like their, their name in here. Um, I will just point out this. So when you set up your own campaign monitor account, you'll have you'll have a limit on the amount of emails that you can send. Um, I can't remember how many it is uh, to begin with, but you'll need to go through various approval stages. So if, if for example, you have a list of 10,000 that you import, you bring it into the system, it's not gonna allow you to send that until you send them some approval information. So it's gonna be things like saying where you got that list from, that data from, guaranteeing that everyone on that list has opted in, um, and some legal information, stuff like that. Basically, this is to prevent spammers setting up accounts and then just sending bulk sending out to lots of people. So um, we've got a limit of around um, 28,000 because that's kind of the limit we've sent on behalf of, um, or our customers sent or we've sent on behalf of them. So if, well, if we want to put 100,000 in there, we might have to go through that approval process again. And it's, again, as I said, it's, it's good because the reason they do that is to make sure their servers and their IP addresses stay clean and aren't seen as uh, abused for spam. You can add multiple people in here. So if you've got a team working with you, you can add, add other people in to help you with your um, emails. You can set up, there's various things in here I actually want to touch on. So the first thing is your sending domains. So for us, we, um, um, by default, it's just going to try and send it the best way possible to to um, to get it through to your customers. But what you can do is um, add a sending domain in. So you can actually, I've got a few in there, but you can actually, um, Claire, if you just scrub that last bit uh, where it's showing the, the client domains there. Um, so what you can do is actually authenticate your own domain. What that will do is just help uh, the deliverability a bit more. Um, and as it says here, reduce spam complaints um, because it just looks a bit more authentic. There's a, there's some different levels of authenticity you can go into or authentication you can go into by selecting that once you've added it. And it's it's worth taking those extra steps if you're going to be sending regularly, which we've done on our other, other client accounts. Um, also through here, how people unsubscribe, do you allow them to do a one-click unsubscribe where they click unsubscribe at the bottom of the email just uns unsubscribes immediately, or do you ping them to another page where you get them to double-click unsubscribe? And as it says here, the reason you might want to do that is just to prevent um, bulk machine unsubscribes, to make sure actually people are looking at that unsubscribe. It's up to you how you want to do that, you know, how precious you are about people staying on that list. Um, this is quite useful display sent campaigns. So you can actually, if I click edit, you can um, basically generate some code. So uh, let's see here. I want to show all campaigns. Maybe no, the latest, uh, we'll go with the latest, no, top 10. Let's go with the top 10. Um, we want to show the oldest first, um, no, most recent first. And I want it as a list item. 
And so now I can generate that code. And then I can copy and paste the script that's uh, showing on the right. I can put that into uh, my website, it could be a WordPress website, and it's just going to generate that code automatically. So it can give you uh, an archive of every email you've sent, which can be quite handy. Um, there is a way to actually turn those uh, individual emails on and off as to whether they show in that list as well. So it could be that you select all email, all campaigns, but you turn off some that only go to specific segments. Let's see what else we've got here. Authentication email archive, oh, templates as well. So um, I, I don't tend to use templates. I just use the, the basic layout editor. But if you want to use your own templates, you can set them up here. So you can create your own. You can upload your own HTML. You've got some options. I'm not going to take you through that because um, I think that's only useful if you really are quite specific about how you're going to set things up. Um, uh, and really, it's not. It's outside of the scope of this particular webinar, but I'm just showing where it is in case you want to dive in and have a play. But what we'll do in go back to settings is I want to set up one thing in here for analytics. Click on that again. So every single email I want to be tagged with Google Analytics UTM codes. And what that means is that when someone clicks on a link, goes through to the resulting website, uh, it's going to add an extra few bits of code onto the end of the URL. And that means Google Analytics and I think other tracking um, software can pick up those UTM codes and then incorporate them into the stats. So it means that you can see how many people actually come through from that email. I think we've talked about this separately as part of Google Analytics and, and uh, UTM codes are very useful for any sort of tracking. But by setting this up, uh, if you go through this process, just need to put in your um, domain name. It allows that tracking to be automatically added to all your campaigns. So it's something you'll want to do first. Let's go through and create a campaign. So I'm going to go click on campaigns and click on create a campaign. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, how you might create a regular newsletter. So I'm going to use our club webinars as an example for that. So I have over here a tab from our last one, which had Dan and Kate on it. Thank you very much, guys, who came on to talk about product pricing. That's a good one to, to watch if you haven't already. And what we'll do is we'll call the subject of this particular email the subject of the webinar. So we'll just put that in there. And this name is just for me. No one else is going to see this. So this just helps us reference it internally. We know what it's about. I mean, you can call it anything you like. You can call it newsletter and then uh, say May 2023 or for me, because we do these weekly, then we'd want to have a weekly newsletter with the title. Um, let's add a subject. It pre-populates it with the name, but I'm just going to put club webinar in front. And that's the subject line that will appear in someone's email. We've also got preview text. So preview text is what gets shown. Um, sometimes email programs will show the first few lines of the copy. But if it's got this preview text in, it will show that instead. And that allows you to give a, a little, little summary about what's in the content. Think of it a bit like a, a, Google, analyst, uh, a Google snippet, uh, Google results snippet. So it's going to have the title, which is your subject, and then the description, the method description. Um, so it's going to tell you what's in the page. So what we'll put in here is um, fun discussion on how we do pricing. Obviously, you can write whatever you want in there. You don't you don't want it too long. Um, you can even use personalization. So if uh, we're not really going to touch on this, but I will mention it. If your list contains custom fields that you can then insert them in here. So fields like first first name, last name, we could put in there as well. Um, so um, it might just help it feel a little bit more personal to the person who's receiving it. Let's click save. And then we'll edit the from. Uh, I want to keep this as is. So I've already sent a few test campaigns and deleted them. Hence, it's kept the last ones in here. And you'll find that it'll, it'll tend to keep the last from information in there, which is really handy. Um, I do want it to come from me and my email address. The reason for that is I just feel that when an email comes from a person, it's more likely to be read. If it's a more generic email like uh, info or inquiries or sales, as that there's a chance, unless you're expecting it, like um, uh, a sales email that's just come through from something you bought, you're more likely to ignore it. And I think it, I think it actually sneaks through spam a little bit better. Um, no, don't quote me on that, but um, I certainly feel that you get a better open rate with it. So um, from address, that's fine. Um, I'm not going to change anything, but if I did, it would allow me to save it. 
So that's all good. Um, and who do we want to send this email to? Well, we want to send it to our club members. So let's import them. Now, um, I could just, if I'm doing a one-off campaign, so I'm not going to send another campaign to this list, then I can just import a list specifically for this campaign. But because this is for our club members, I'm going to create a list called club members. Now, I can actually just manually type in a list. I could copy and paste from a spreadsheet, and it usually does a pretty good job about um, pulling out the content, or I can just drag and drop on a file I've got on my desktop straight on there. That's great, brilliant. And so now I just need to match up the data. And we, if you remember this from uh, MailChimp, you go through this process as well. And you'll go through this any process when you're importing data. It's matching up one field to another. I actually quite like this process. I find it easier than MailChimp. Um, email address, it usually finds that. First name, last name, it's got all of those in there because it's matching up with these. Status, well, status isn't a default field in the campaign monitor. So we need to create a field for that. I just want it as a text field. Yeah, that's fine. Create new field. Member rating and all these other things, they've come from MailChimp. I've actually just did an export um, when I was preparing for this webinar from MailChimp um, just to save me typing out the data. So it's it's just a, a, as though it, it's an example of maybe moving from one system to another. So it comes out with lots of other data here. I'm not interested in having any of that. So I can just leave it as nothing, skip this field. So when I'm happy, I click save and continue. Now it imports. Now, depending on how many you've got, will depend on how long it takes to import, but we can see all the club members in there. Brilliant. So let's move on to designing the email. Actually, before we do that, I'll just show you the A-B test. So um, I don't, can't remember if we went through this in MailChimp, but with A-B testing, what this allows you to do, and it works particularly well if you've got a large list of people, is you can send um, a few emails out to um, with one style, another another few emails out to another style, and whichever gets you the most uh, results you want, which could be, in this case, increased open rate, clicks, or visits to a specific URL, it will then send the rest of the emails to that design. Um, so let's go through. Uh, let's say I want increased click rate. So I want more clicks. I don't really care what on, I just want more clicks. Um, what do I want to test? Uh, let's click continue. And I want to test, well, there's different things you can do here, different designs. So you can have two separate emails. You can have different senders. So you could send it from inquiries or a, pers a personal name or different subjects. I'm going to do different subjects just because it's easy for me to demonstrate. So we've got two here. We've got version A and version B. I'm going to put in, um, let's just take, let's put this, uh, put fun, no, newsletter, delivery, actually, no, even better, fun awaits, exclamation marks, because three is better. Um, and let's make this even better. Super fun discussion on product on product pricing. Okay. Now, what you want to do with these is just change little things at a time. So I've changed both of them. It might be actually, we want to change just the subject line and not the preview text. The less you change, the better, because then you can tell what um, which bit of text actually resulted in more clicks whereas if you change too much you're not really sure but so i'm just giving you an example that in version a that's our standard one and then in version b this is the one i want to try this is also really useful if you're let's say your boss is um just wants you to keep doing the same thing you can say hey look can i just send a little trial let's try some with a slightly different title and see how that works. And uh, if, if it does, then we'll, we'll send the rest of them and they might be happy with that. So this is often quite fun. The one thing I would say is you need to have a big list and I'll show you the reason why when we come to that. So let's save that for now. Uh, then I'm gonna design the email. Got a few options here. I can import HTML if I'm that way inclined, or I can uh, even just create a plain text email, which uh, can be quite useful. We've used that sometimes if we've just got a very simple message we want we want to send and we want it to look like a regular email, we'll send a plain text one. But I'm just going to use their template builder. If you're lacking in creativity, you can just pick one of the ones they've already got and then just start tweaking it. But I'm just going to go with a standard layout. Um, I'm going to go for this one called announcement. And I'm just going to customize it. 
I mean, they're all based on the same template builder, so you can achieve any of the designs they've got there. But I like to start with something nice and simple. So let's start adding some bits in there. So first, let's get our logo. I'll just drag that in. And I just resize it because it's far too large. Let's bring that down to there. And I'm going to put in our thumbnail image. And actually, just like with MailChimp, we can bring in a video as well. So I can just drag and drop a video in there and I can put a link directly to the YouTube video. But that's not what I want people to do. I want people to go to our blog and watch it there. Um, if nothing else, to make sure they're members. But also it's just just keeps everything on brand. But you can just put um, a video URL in there and it will then show a little thumbnail of it. I do, I do think that even if you want people to link straight to the YouTube video, it's better to make your own um, thumb because it always looks better. So we've got our, our image in there. Let's put some text in. Let's get rid of those, make that in the center. Yeah. Some text here. Um, I'm going to take out the links just to keep it clean. Lovely. Um, compelling call to action. What we want to have there is I click on it. You just use the side menu to change the text. Um, what would be watch the webinar? Put that in. That looks good. Nice and simple. Let's add some links in. Otherwise, no one's going to be going anywhere. So I can go to my page, click on the URL at the top go back to my campaign and I want to make sure the um, actual thumbnail is linked. Let's link that straight to it. And I could put here challenges of product Oops. pricing. So I could put that in there uh, as a little alt text, which means that if for some reason that image isn't showing up, it's going to, it might, it might not always show that alt text instead. I want to hyperlink the title. I can do that here. Don't know why it thinks it's a password. <laughs> Brilliant. And I want to make sure this is linked to. And while I'm here, I've got a couple of different button styles. I can make it a small button, medium, large. I do like a nice large button. You can have different styles. So we've got a flat one, shadow, depth, you know, the old 3D style, or just an outline. Um, it obviously worked better if we've got black text inside. Um, rounded corners, put it back on that, rounded corners or not, and then how it aligns, or full width. One thing it doesn't have on here, which I wish it did, it, it seems to have lots of controls, but I want more rounded corners. On our website, I don't know if it's gonna show it on here. Um, yeah, on our website, we li we've got nice rounded buttons and I can't do that on here, which is a bit of a pain. So the only other way to do it would be to use a graphic rather than an actual button on the page. One thing I do know is that we want a uh, color that's going to meet our brand. So I'm going to copy and paste in. Um, I'm going to change this to a blue. I, I could actually do it by clicking on this here and selecting a color, trying to get it right. But it'd be a lot easier to paste in our hex color code that we know works. Um, I will give you a tip. If you are on a Mac, you can use the tool. Let me see if I can find what it's called. It's called Digital Color Meter. So if you look for that on your Mac, it allows you to um, pick, It'll once it's loaded, it'll, it, it basically allows you to pick a color and then it, it, it allows you to copy that as a hex reference, which you can paste in. Probably for pro users, but uh, if you are always picking colors um, and using them elsewhere, that's really useful. So that's digital color meter. Um, so that's good, we, we've got colored there. In fact, what we can do is, let's just go done editing, I can, just click on, I don't know if you saw it then, you click on, I'll go back and click on that. Click on the little um, cog and I can just set some basic settings here and it, then it applies across everything. So I want my button colors to be blue. I want my link colors uh, just to be black, I think really. I'm not, I'm not bothered about them being um, styled. I want um, the text I'll leave as that, but I can change, I can have lots of different fonts in there, choose the one that's appropriate for our brand. You can't have custom fonts. You just have to have the ones list listed. I'm happy with all the sizes of colors. Let's keep that as we are. Um, button text. Um, 
yeah we'll leave that as white but you can obviously change that to black if we wanted but white's good what else section background yeah so we can have a default section backgrounds if we want i'll come to that in a second um that's all good so there's sort of the standards um in this default template i'm only using the bit at the top so i'm not going to use everything else but it has got these other sections added in which allows us to have multiple content so if we've got a newsletter that may have a few different sections this is the best way of doing it but i don't want these so i'm going to delete that one i wish actually before i delete that i will just show you some of the options you can add in we should put in video you can also add in an image just by dragging it in you have got some free images or you can upload or you can link directly to an image online or and this is new actually some of the images we've recently uploaded You've got a divider, which helps separate content up a little bit. You can add buttons in, you can add social links in if you're using those. So there's lots of different, uh, lots of different things there. You can also add multiple columns. So you can see here we've got a sort of full width column, or it's one column really, it's not, not full width. You've got two columns and then you've got three columns. Plus you can have, um, if we add a new section, Let's get off that. If we add a new section here, we can choose from them. So we can have actually a two thirds, one third set up as well. But I don't want any of those. We want to keep it nice and simple. So what I'm going to do is select this. I need to delete. Yes. Delete. Yes. Delete. Yes. That last one, though, a bit more. Right. Um, I don't want the logo at the bottom, so let's get rid of that. Let's change the color of these icon styles. Let's have those blue as well. Brilliant, we can even change the style of them as well. I like circles, yeah, I prefer that, it's good. But I don't want all of those links, I just want our LinkedIn link. Copy that, put that into LinkedIn. Let's put YouTube on there as well, why not? Okay, and then I'll untick the ones I don't want to show. You can even put your website on there, but I'll leave that off the moment. So that's everything we want on there. Have I checked my list? Have I got everything? Yes. So now we want to preview it. We want to see what that might look like. So click preview. And it's going to show you two views, like a, a loose idea of what it might look like on a desktop and what it looks like on a phone, just so we can check how the text flows, make sure we've got everything we want on there. Yeah, I mean, there's a few bits I'll tidy up there. Let's go and get rid of that. There we are, there's another one. I can find them. I think it's because I've they're so small. Add some text in. There's these little dividers here. very frustratingly i can't get rid of and try and add some spaces in there between them i think it's because i was happily merrily deleting everything there we go right can i delete that there we go good they're all gone get rid of those separators so let's preview it again just going to update. Yeah, happy with that. Happy with that. Yeah, good. So something else I'll show you. Um, we just go, we can we can actually send a test as well if we want to from here. So I can just send it straight to my email. And it's going to send me an actual preview email to test it, which is quite useful. Um, but I'm happy to save that. In fact, um, I think one of the things I didn't show you in here Did I show you everything? Um, maybe I showed you everything. Yeah, no, I showed you everything. Right. So we're good to go. We've got our subject. We've got our A-B tests that we're going to do. Um, who, it's, who it's going to, who it's from. Yeah, we are ready to send. Ah, now because we've got the A-B test, we've got to choose. So basically, this is where we get to choose how many people it's going to go to. Um, 
now this is where you're going to have a large list because obviously I've only got four people in this list. So it's going to send one to one, uh, one to another, and then the other two receive the winning version. There's no really no real point doing that. But if you've got uh, maybe 500 or 1,000 in there, I think it certainly is going to make it more worthwhile. And then you can send it to a, a certain percentage. I don't think I'll be able to control this really. But if we've got more in there, then I can move this slider and actually send it to maybe 5 10%, you know, however many I want before the winning one goes out. And basically what happens is if A gets more clicks, then um, after uh, this set period of time, then it's just going to send out the winning uh, subject line. Um, but I don't want to do that, for example. So I'm going to actually turn that off. And it's going to remove my second version and just uh, stick with the first one we had. But let's prepare to send. I want to send it immediately, although I could schedule. I can put in a specific time for it. But I want to send it immediately. And I want to send it to myself as a um, once uh, to be notified once it's once it's gone out. And let's do that. I'm going to check my email and make sure that has gone out. That should come through in a minute. Um, while that's sort of pending, there it's going to sit, sort of um, sending it out. But usually it goes pretty quickly, and depending on how how big the list is, well, how long it will depend on how long it takes. So while it does that, I'm going to talk through the other areas. Oh, there is this one called Worldview. We won't really see much, but if I click on Worldview, it's it's kind of pointless but fun. Is if you've got a large list, you can see uh, where people are opening them um, on the map. Now, obviously, this does sort of expose how it, how how much data that email actually does track, um, because it can detect that from their IP where they're located, um, in, and so actually seeing where people are. But it's quite interesting and quite fun to watch people opening and clicking. Um, seeing what they're doing. Let's go back to the campaign. Um, while we do this, I'm going to look through automation. I'm going to quickly look through a custom journey. So from here we can see different options. Uh, just for expediency, I'm just going to leave the name as a boring new journey. But I'm going to look at these options here. We can send, we can start this journey when someone joins a list, when someone um, Exits a segment, so their segment changes. Maybe it's their birthday, so an anniversary of a date. It could be if you're sending out um, your garage, you're sending out MOTs. It could be that their MOT is due, um, or you know any date you like. So you can you can you can pick different things like this. So I'm let's do one. Subscriber joins a list, and we want to apply it to our club members. Let's build the journey. So when someone joins a list, what do we want to do? Do we want to delay? Probably. We don't want to. Maybe I, I manually add them to the list. So we don't want to um, add them straight away. We'll put a delay in of, um, let's just say two hours. And then we want to send an email. And so I can call that step one. You obviously give it a proper name, you can put your subject um, and who it's from in there. Then you can design your email content and you can, um, if I click on this, you can base your email content from ones you've already designed, which is always a good good way to start. So let's just say we've done that. I make changes to my email. I'm happy with it. Preview it. Yeah, great. Save and return to the journey. Let's say this is a welcome email where I'm just saying, yeah, thanks for thanks for becoming a member. Then I could just send that email. And um, maybe if um if they didn't click on any links, you could add another step to it where it's a condition. So we can define the condition rules and say, well, uh, we can't do it because we haven't really sent anything here. I don't think maybe we've got it here. Yeah. So you can say, well, if. Um, here we go. So I can say if someone has clicked an email in step one, any link, then. Um, or so it hasn't. So um, was open, but did not have a specific link clicked. So they didn't. Then yeah, here we are. So they didn't open any any links. Um, so they saw it, but they didn't do anything with it. Maybe they've got a second step with the membership, or we wanted them to watch a video. Then um, then that's going to go through to the yes column. Otherwise, it's going to be no. So if I save that, what I could do is say, well, if if they didn't click any links, then send them another email. Um, maybe it's a follow-up or a nudge or something like that. And maybe if it's, an, if it's a no, then 
we end it there. We don't need to do anything else. But it could be if it's a no, then maybe you wait a couple of days and um, and we'll ask them again. Um, so that is, I just wanted to quickly show you how you can start building journeys. But we've used some of these to um, you could use it as a welcome, uh, a welcome for clients, as I said, with with one of our clients. And it, it allows you to to warm people up um, before you speak to them. Or you could do it as a pre-product sale. So before people buy, buy a product, maybe they you just want them to um they have the option to subscribe to this free bit of advice, which can work quite well for software, where you send them a seek, uh, you send them a sequence of emails, which gives them some uh, maybe some step by step advice on how to solve their problem. Um, but each one of those emails is just gently pushing the idea of buying uh, the software. But let's skip that, go straight back home. And we're going to look at we'll skip transactional again look at lists of subscribers show you how this looks so here's our club members and click on this we can see who's part of it good old jackie's cakes we can go into settings and this is where we can choose how people um uh subscribe so if they if we're if we if we are creating a sign up form which i'll do in a second and we want to do a double opt-in that means that people when they subscribe they'll get an email which they need to click on that again um, to actually confirm they're joining that particular list and you, you've probably seen this many times before then we want to change this from single opt-in to confirmed or double opt-in so we'll do that here um, and then we've got some other settings on what what do they see do you want them to see um, a custom page on campaign monitor or do you want them to see a page on your website you can you can put in these various options here you can change that same with unsubscribe what happens you know where do they go do they have a survey at the end and so on i'm not going to dive into those <clears throat> um but let's make a sign up form very quickly make a very basic one so this is actually a page that you could use you could send a, a link to it you could put it um a, a button on your website that links straight to this um you've got some basic heading content what fields you want to collect I don't want to collect status, just name and email. Um, asking for permission. So if you want to be totally compliant, you really want to make sure all of these are selected. Uh, if I turn that off, otherwise it won't allow me to generate it. There we go. Um, and do a little bit of styling, change colors. Let's see if I've still got that. No, no, I haven't. Let's put the color in. There we go. Makes it Makes it more on brand for me. And then we can save and generate a link. Now with this link, I could have a button on our website that goes to this page. And I think it should look like that. So if you want a super simple form, you can do that. Otherwise you can create code that's based on the same thing that actually allows you to copy and paste it and put it in your site or using this pop-up style as well, which is quite nice. So, you know, there's different ways of collecting collecting yeah. this allows you to collect people on your website so uh, if you want to run a run a newsletter and you know that people like like to spend time on your site but um you you can then collect their emails that way okay so i think this is something else i want to let's leave this look at on here we've talked through that um you can also with the members you can have different segments So with segments, it allows you to uh, split up your list based on certain rules. So we might have it based on status. Um, in fact, I can't remember what status I had in here. Let's just go back. Lapsed. OK, so what I could do is I can create a segment. Mm, status, so basically create a statement where status matches exactly lapsed and that's it i should get one maybe oh i've got to name my statement so lapsed members there we are it's just brought through jackie's cakes so that's really useful if um if we have lapsed members maybe we want to send them uh, a message uh after six months um, just to see if they want to resubscribe or or not, and then you then you can wipe them from the list if that's if that's the case. So that's quite useful. 
or you could have it um you can have one that's on the flip side where where they are actual members and you maybe just send only your newsletters to them but for the time being we're going to send it to everyone in fact i could yeah i, I won't show you now because i've sent it but you could um we could have when we sent the newsletter you'd have an option to send to a specific segment but we'll leave that as it is and we'll see if our campaign has been sent now what i'll do is actually i'm looking at the email now i will click on one of the links we'll see it pop up here brilliant yeah so that's popped up that's that's triggered so hopefully if i go into this now we might get some stats there we go you can see i've clicked on it so this is quite nice. Um, I find the reporting here makes sense for me. MailChimp one doesn't, but again, I think that's just familiarity. So when you click on your campaign, you can you can either see it, you can share it. So it's going to remind you of what it was, what the subject was, and so on. And that's quite useful. You can share that on um, social media if you want. Um, but you can do that from here as well. And it also gives you this nice little graph of how it performed, how many people opened and clicked over time as well. You can you can actually then dive into recipient activity and set, see exactly who clicked on the link. And you can see that I did. Sadly, uh, Jackie and Bob and Claire have not clicked on it. What a shame. Um, but there's lots of detail as well. If you've got different links in the website uh, on the email, you can see which ones are clicked and by who. Um, you can even dive into that worldview and see all the as fun as it is, I, I don't have any use for that at all. Bounce summary, this is quite useful. So if um, like this one, um, doesn't it, the domain doesn't exist, so it's not going to go anywhere. So that bounced. So if you keep getting a bounce like that, you probably want to remove them because you'll be certainly if you're um, on a pay per campaign, you're going to be paying to send to that person. Um, yeah, there's lots of there's lots of other things here, but generally, I just want to I want an idea that that people are actually using it. And for me, it's clicks. That's what I'm looking at. Um, open rate is becoming harder and harder with email programs locking down how people are actually um, uh, the tracking that's going on on emails, and, and rightly so, I think. Um, so really, all I want to see is clicks through to the website, which it can track. Um, and to be honest, as long as we've got the Google Analytics code installed, I'm going to be able to see all of that on um, Google Analytics, Analytics, except for who clicked on it. So yeah, quite useful. Um, I think that about rounds it off in terms of campaign uh, monitor. So um, hopefully you found that useful. This personally is the one I use. I find it easiest. As I said, it could be just down to fam familiarity, but I find it quite simple and straightforward in terms of sending out emails when we've got to do that. And so I, I do recommend it to clients, but I totally understand why people want to use MailChimp because um, it's free, at least, uh, at least to start off with. So what are we looking at next time? So next time, actually, this is quite important. Um, Google Analytics uh, or Universal Analytics, I should say, will stop working at the end of June. So we are going to have a recap of my Google Analytics for walkthrough um, next week, where it's going to take you through um, setting up your Google Analytics for account and also um, just going through some of the basics of how you set up um, um, how you look through the reports and set up conversions, that sort of thing, just to just to give you um, get you familiar with it. Because at the end of June, Universal Analytics, your normal Google Analytics, will stop collecting data. So it's important to make sure a GA4, the new account, is collecting data and it's set up how you want. So we're going to recap that. We're here obviously every Friday from 10 a.m. If you have any questions uh, or you want to be a guest email support at ratherinventive.com. And remember, all episodes are available on our website, ratherinventive.com slash club. That's ratherinventive.com slash club. Also, I'd say if, if there's any particular subject that you want to know about and you're not sure if we've got it, just email us and we'll see if we can find it for you. And if not, it'll be a great topic for next time. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all next week. Bye.